all right so now that we have our object set up let's look at creating some new fields and relationships right so let's quickly go to setup and under setup let's go to object manager now for which object do we need to create the fields we need to create the fields for covid count so i'll just quickly type covid here so covid count and here after the detail section there's something called fields and relationships right let's go to fields and relationships and here as you see there are some standard fields available as we discussed now let's create some custom fields using this new button so these are the list of data types that are available to choose from when it comes to creating fields so there are some primary or preliminary data types like checkbox date email number person phone text and all of it and then you have some relationship related data types and also you have something called formula and auto number i think we have already visited auto number when we created the object right the auto number field is already there the name field apart from that let's start with some fields now since this is the covid count object what we want to do is we want to track the number of active cases recovered cases and deceased cases right so these would be numbers right so i'll just go ahead and choose number and click on next let's name it active cases okay, i did i made a typo here let me just remove the api name active cases right so the api name gets automatically populated and there's a length associated so this is nothing but the total length including the decimal places right this can only be 6 18 characters in total so if you want to have two decimal places you could just say 16 comma 2 something like this but since our active cases will always be a whole number i'll go ahead and choose 18 comma 0 all right description can be and help text please enter the total active cases for the day we'll look into what is the what is this help text in a while now then you have a checkbox to mark it required we do want this to be required so let's just mark this as required so that whenever the user saves the record they have to enter it whatsoever all right whether will this be a unique value no because for two consecutive days you could have 25000 active cases right so that means you cannot mark it as unique external id is something that's used for you know when you are trying to in, in uh, interact with an external system that's when you use this checkbox all right and for ai prediction you can check this ai but this is also something with, related to einstein analytics and ai predictions so we won't be checking it for now and do you want to you know add it this to a custom report type you can just check it and this will be available for reporting for uh, future purposes right let's click on next and then you see that the fee, the field level security opens up now what is field level security this is nothing but whether or not this particular field will be visible to the to a particular user logged in with a particular profile right now in this case as you see it is marked as visible for all profiles what is the reason the reason is we have marked this required on the object level right if i just uncheck this and go ahead you'll see that I will be able to configure this and mark it visible because if it is a required field, you have to enter the value, right? That means you, you have to mark it visible. That's why Salesforce implicitly sets it, sets it as visible and does not let you change it. All right. So for now, let's do something. Let's not mark it required. We'll definitely fill the value. And what I'll do is I'll mark it visible for our profiles. That is system admin and support manager. What is this other checkbox? The other checkbox, checkbox is the read only checkbox. What does this mean? If you want this to be visible, but only to be read only, that means the user cannot edit it. Then we can also check, check this particular box right here. All right. But we want the user to input this value. So we won't mark it as read only. All right. Let's click on next. And then this needs to be added to a page layout. We'll look into what page layout is. Let's cl click on save and new. Now save and new. Let's start afresh to create a new field uh, altogether. So we created total active cases. Let's create total deceased cases. I'll quickly do the same, should not be much of a difference. Total deceased cases, 18 comma zero. Save and new. Now my third field would be total recovered cases, right? So let's go select number. So 
So if you see there's a default value section also. If you have a field wherein you want to default a value, you can definitely add, add that value here, right? So let's say if you wanted to set the recovered cases to 50,000 every time a user creates a record, you could very well mention 50,000 here. But that's not a use case we have right now. So we will just leave it blank because the recovered cases might change every day, right? So let's click on next. And just give it for system admin and the support manager profile. Let's click on next and save. So we have created three fields and if you see, you'll be able to see the difference between standard and custom fields. You see, you'll be easily able to identify which ones are the standard fields, the ones that do not have the underscore underscore C at the end, right? So the three fields that we have created, which are number 18 comma zero are all custom fields. Whereas these four are standard fields. What are standard fields? These are something that Salesforce has provided and custom fields are something that we have created from scratch, right? now. If we were to look at how things look like here when we click on the new button, let's go to COVID count. Let's click on new. I think I'll have to refresh this page. Yes, I will have to. So let's refresh. And now let's click on the new button. So you see, you're getting three fields coming up here, active cases, deceased and recovered. And you see this icon, that is the information icon or rather the help text, the description that we had added on the help text section, right? Please enter the total active cases enter the total deceased and enter the total recovered cases. All right. And if I were to save this record, I could just type in some information. Okay. That would be a big number. Let's reduce this to 120 and total recovered would be. Let's click on save. So now you are successfully being able to save a record with all these custom, all these values on the fields, right? Looks like a good use case. All right, now let's create the rest of the fields. Now that we have created some number fields, let's create a formula field. Now we have active cases, deceased cases and recovered cases, right? Let's create a formula field, which would be, be the summation or rather the total number of cases for the day, right? So let's go ahead and create a formula field. So to create a formula field, you just need to select the formula section here, right? Let's click on next and let's give it the name total, total cases. Now it's asking you what would be the return type? What kind of, what kind of data type would this field be saving or recording? So we'll be calculating the summation of numbers, right? So it would end up being a number itself, right? So out of these options, it would be a number. And here again, you get to select the decimal places. I'll just set it to zero and let's click on next. Now that you have mentioned that you want a formula, it's asking you to set the formula. Now, if you were to write this in English, this would be the sum of active cases, recovered cases and deceased cases, right? Now to convert this into Salesforce's language, we can just use the merge fields right here. All right. So you see, select field type, COVID count and what fields are available, the custom fields that we have, right? So it's currently showing you all the number fields that are available because we are creating a number type formula. So I'll just remove the string that I wrote and let's input active cases. I'll add a plus sign, this deceased cases. In case you don't know the operator, the symbol of the operator, you can very well click on this insert operator button and this will let you choose any one of them. So if you see add can, can be taken up from here as well, right? And then I'll just add the third field that's total recovered. All right. And then down below you have something called check syntax. Salesforce checks and compiles whether the formula that you've written is correct or not. And if it is correct, it gives you a green signal saying no syntax errors in merge fields or functions. All right, so this looks good and we are good to click on next. Now, once we click on next, there's an interesting thing you'll see that you can definitely mark the mark or check or uncheck the visible section, but it is read only for sure. Now, this is a formula field, right? So formula field is supposed to be a formula which is generated by different fields, right? So you cannot change the value to it, which is why it has to be marked read only. Right. So there's no point changing the value because Salesforce will, it's, will, will take care of the formula itself. Right. So you don't need to make any changes to this particular field. Uh, talking about the visibility, we can mark this as visible for the system admin as well as the support manager profile. Let's click on next and let's add this as well on the layout. Now if we click on save and let's go back to our COVID counts page and now let's create a new record. So when I click on new, you'll see I just have the three fields here. Even though I created the formula field, it's not showing up because you don't need to enter it, right? So let's enter some values. And 
and let's click on save now once you click on save okay it's still not showing up here right let me quickly click on refresh all right let me try to edit this record okay right so you see this is coming up here so if i just change the values this value will also be changed and this is a field that is calculated upon save so you see you're not letting it's not letting you edit it right now if i click on save and try to edit this record again you, you should see that the total cases is increased by 500 based on the value that i updated right but it is not letting you edit it at all all right great now let's go back and create a new field so our next field would be the date field we want to let the user enter the date for which the, they are making an entry right let's click on new and let's create an entry date so for date you have something called date data type you can just choose it if you have a requirement wherein you know you need to store date and time both you can choose the date and time uh, data type all right let's go with date for now let's click on next let's type in here entry date so you see now since this is a different data type you don't get the option of setting those decimal and length and all of it right it's it's simple just the date let's click on next and let's mark it visible only for system admin and support manager profile let's click on next and this should be added to the page layout let's click on save and new and now the next field that we'll be creating is the comments field or any any comments if the user has to make on the input that he's making right so any comments is, uh, is nothing but it's kind of a paragraph or something that they need to write now for writing paragraphs or you know a, a length of strings you have options like text text area long text area and then encrypted and rich text area right based on how long your text could be you can choose these options now text allows you to write only 255 characters whereas a text area allows you to choose allows you to write 250 characters on separate lines right so this is far bigger than the text and then if you still don't if you still don't uh, go with the length that text area provides you you can go with long text area this has 131072 characters on separate lines so that's pretty huge right so for now let's go with text area that will provide us 255 characters on separate lines and let's click on next i'll just call it comments so if they have any comments to make on why the data they've entered or you know what is the source of the data they can enter the value here let's click on next and let's make it visible for system admin and support profile as always let's click on next let's click on save now let's go back and create a new record let's see how the new fields are showing up let's refresh this page let's click on new right so you see active deceased recovered entry date a good pop-up of the date is opening up and then comments right if you see this is draggable because it's a text area you can drag it right so let me just enter some values let's click on save so you see my data is saved and now you can see that the total cases field is showing up and it's not editable right you see a pencil icon here for all the fields apart from the formula field because this is not supposed to be edited if you want to make any changes you can just click on the edit button right here this opens up a pop-up and you can make changes or you can simply click on this pencil icon here and just edit that particular field right you see the total cases updated all right great let's go ahead and create some more fields now we'll be creating a field that's a that's a drop down selection so it would be the day category right we would uh, want the user to enter whether it was a very pathetic day in terms of you know a good number of deceased cases were there or where the recovery is very high it could be a green day or if it was an average day wherein the number of active cases increased the deceased cases were okay and not more rec many recovers recoveries were done right so in that case if you want the user to choose from a list of options or list of values you go with a pick list so there are two options if you want the user to select just one option you use a pick list option and if you want them to select multiple values from a list then you go with the multi select for now we'll be going with the pick list option because we want them to choose any one value out of red orange and green right let's click on next and here let's give it the label name day category 
Now here let's us enter some values, each separated by a new line. I'll just enter the value saying red, orange, green. All right. Now you have options to whether you want to display these values alphabetically or based on the way you have mentioned it. All right. If you want them to be mentioned alphabetically, sometimes that's the, that's the case, right? You want to mention the country and state picklist values uh, alphabetically. That that helps during those times. But let's keep it red, orange, and green the way we have entered, so we won't be checking this. And then if you want this value to be set as default value, you can check this. All right. If you don't check it, the default value would be none, and you would be asked to choose from any of these. All right. And then the third checkbox is about whether you want to restrict your pick list to the values defined in the value set. Now, if let's say there's some third party integration or someone wants to, you know, stamp some value and create a record from an external system and they want to enter a value that's called yellow, but yellow is not part of our pick list, right? We just have three values. So if we check this box, they won't be able to, you know, stamp yellow uh, or, or some other color to this particular pick list value. Right? And if we do not restrict it, they are very well uh, invited to you know change the value and update any kind of string to it. All right, that's what the restriction means. Let's click on next. Let's again mark this visible for system admin and support manager profile. Let's click on next. Let's click on save. All right. Let's go back to our COVID count tab and let's refresh and create a new record okay it's taking some time to load because the fields are just getting created so it takes time to be indexed and you know meanwhile let's create one more field and that field would be a checkbox right so that checkbox would be checked whenever the, the number of recovered cases are greater than the deceased cases all right so whenever you, there's a day wherein the number of people who recovered are more than the people who uh, expired or you know were deceased in that case that checkbox will be checked to true so for checkboxes you have something called checkbox right so it holds a checked value that's called true and or a unchecked value that's called false let's click on next and i'll just name it is recovered greater than deceased question mark all right and the default value would be unchecked all right let's click on next I'll just mark this visible for the two profiles that we have. Let's click on next, save. All right, now let's go back, refresh and see if the fields have come up. Let's click on new. So I still don't see the, see the fields. So let me just log out and log in. Maybe that helps. Sometimes it takes time to you know load the fresh fields that have come up. So let me log in again. And now let's see. Let's go to our application, COVID tracker. Let's go to COVID counts and let's click on new. Right, so now I'm seeing those fields, right? So active cases, deceased cases and recovered cases, you can enter a number here, right? And if you use the arrow keys, you can very well, you know, add or subtract using your up and down arrow keys, right? So you can just use that as well. Let me just add some values. Recovered cases are 500 that is more than the deceased entry date is for today's date comments this information is correct day category i would say since the total number of active cases increased i would just keep it in orange because the deceased cases are less and is recovered greater than deceased yeah that's true so i'll just check it and click on save all right so all the values are getting saved and now you are able to create some custom fields right so with this lesson, you should be able to create basic custom fields with all these different data types. Now, based on the data model requirements, you can create those fields and there's no limitation as such uh, on, on what kind of fields you should create. It's completely dependent on the business use case, right? I hope you're feeling comfortable with creating an application now, creating a custom object and creating some fields. Now, next we'll be looking at how do we, you know, modify or, you know, alter this particular layout, the look and feel of it. Right? We'll take a look at this entire page and see what all can be done.